So here it is, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S23. It was launched at a very glitzy event here in Bangalore at the Samsung Opera House. But of course, uh, the hero out here are these two products and I'm going to be talking about this. A quick first look is what I'm going to be doing in this video. If you don't know me yet, I'm Ashad. You're watching Track It in English. Let's go. So I want to start off with, of course, the S23 Ultra. The first thing that you will notice is that these two phones don't look too different. I've been using the S22 Ultra for a long time, but they look very similar at the outset. But there are some subtle differences in in design that make it slightly better. Firstly, the curved edges on the S22 Ultra that we had is flatter now on the S23 Ultra and therefore it's easier to hold. And of course, the S23 Ultra is also heavier now. So that's the two major differences that I noticed with the design of the phone itself. Also, what makes the S23 Ultra the S23 Ultra is of course the fact that you also do get the S Pen along with it. But the S23 Ultra is a tale of two stories and it all happens on the inside. To start off, you've got the standard Android 2023 flagship template, which is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage. But this Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 made for Galaxy. So what's different? You've got an overclocked CPU and an overclocked GPU as well. And of course, you also do get ray tracing to go along with it, which Samsung was talking a lot about, but we still don't have any games that do ray tracing, so we'll have to wait and watch. It's a future-proofing mechanism more than anything else. But one thing I'm concerned about is that if it's overclocked, will it throttle more? Will it heat more? Well, we have to test it out. I hope that Samsung has done great performance management and power efficiency management on this. For that, you guys will, of course, have to stay subscribed to our channel. And what the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 also enables for Samsung is an AI-enabled ISP as well, right? So you get a lot of camera upgrades. Of course, there are upgrades to the hardware as well, which we shall talk about first. The first thing that has been upgraded is the primary camera. It's a 200 megapixel new custom sensor for the S23 Ultra. So it's got adaptive pixel binning. So basically it can do four in one pixel binning and 16 in one pixel binning. And when it does four in one pixel binning, you can get 50 MP images with higher resolution. You've got more detail to play with. The rest of the setup is basically the same. You've got your 12 megapixel ultra wide, 10 MP, uh, you know, 3X telephoto and 10 MP, 10X telephoto as well. But on the front, you don't have that 40 megapixel camera now. You've got a 12 megapixel selfie camera, but Samsung's doing a lot of things again with the use of the AI on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 where it's going to be doing object mapping as well. Basically what it will do is that it will actually map out like the shirt or the hair and make it crisper in selfies. Again, that's something that we have to test out, but unfortunately we cannot show you camera samples right now. So yeah, you'll have to stay tuned for it. Now, one thing that wasn't particularly impressive in the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra, and I've mentioned that multiple times in my previous videos, is the low light videography. And Samsung did take a lot of time to talk about how it has improved low light videography, again with the help of AI. By the way, talking about the S22 Ultra, YouTube has this really cool feature now where you can actually buy the product from the product link that pops up in this video itself. I will tag it below, go and check it out, and maybe you can buy the product from there as well. Coming back to the videography part of it, in low light especially, Samsung reduces noise, controls overexposure, all of those things. I really am waiting to check it out. And one thing I'm definitely gonna see is if videography is better than the iPhone. Now, the display has also been slightly upgraded. You've got 1,750 nits of brightness now across all the three devices, by the way, even on the S23 and the S23 Plus. And you've also got the new Corning Gorilla Gas, you know, Victus 2 protection. Should I drop it and see? Uh, no, not right now. Now, internally, you've got a 5,000 mAh battery, 45 watt charging is available on this. And of course, you've also got, uh, you know, 15 watt wireless charging as well. So one thing I like about the S23 Ultra is that Samsung has a new mission to make it more sustainable. Basically, it has 2x more sustainable components in building the whole phone. So that's a good thing. And software, of course, Samsung's been doing really well uh, on that front. You will get One UI 5.1 with Android 13 and four years of software updates and five years of security upgrades as well. On the S23 Ultra, you've got four variants, 8256, 12256, 12512, and 121TB as well. And talking about the colors, right? I mean, this one is in green. This is the new hero color for them. I think it's very subtle. Actually, all the colors in the range are pretty subtle. The other three colors are cream, lavender, and black. Uh, the cream color will look similar to this one because it's the same across all the three phones. All right, so at the time of shooting this video, we don't know the India pricing, but the US pricing is, of course, out for this phone. It starts at $1,199. But there is a possibility that by the time this video goes live, the prices will be out, so we'll flash it on the screen if it's out. Otherwise, we'll add a pinned comment below. Okay, so initial, very initial, very early thoughts for this phone are kind of positive. 
for the S23 Ultra, but we are going to be doing a lot of tests across a lot of different factors and parameters. So you guys should stay subscribed to Track It Tech English. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until the next one, keep tracking and stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.